Okay, in this video, I'd like to show a proof of the dispersion relation. Okay, so I'm just going to write the dispersion relation at first, just to make sure you know where you're, you're in the right place. Omega squared is equal to m0 c squared to b squared over h bar squared plus k squared c squared. Alright, this is the sort of thing that's used in quantum physics and a bit of relativity as well, okay? And definitely in, in to do with the interaction of waves and light and mat with matter, okay? So I'm just going to prove this. Now it's going to take a small, bit of, a small bit of work here really and it'll have to use some Taylor expansions as well. So the first thing I'd like to do is define a Taylor expansion. So Taylor, Taylor expansion says the following. It says f of x is equal to f of a plus 1 over 1 factorial times f prime of a times x minus a plus 1 over 2 factorial times f double prime of a times x minus a to be squared plus smaller terms. Alright, so just to give an, uh, to give I suppose an example of this, if I want to get omega so uh, omega of k or k of uh, omega of k around k is equal to k zero. Now, by the way, just to tell you what a Taylor expansion does, Taylor expansion will make up the function f of x using the infinite sum. And the more terms you use in the sum, the closer you get to the function f of x. And these are useful in sometimes analyzing other functions. Okay, so if we just apply this here, we're going to get the following: omega of k zero plus d omega of k is equal to zero d omega times k minus k zero plus smaller terms. Therefore, omega sub k is approximately omega zero plus d omega dk, or excuse me, d omega d a k is equal to zero, d omega times k minus zero, k minus excuse me, k zero. All right. So that's to show you just how to apply a Taylor expansion. You're going to need something similar to that in uh, improving this. Okay. So we know from Relativity, or if you do, did a course in modern physics, that e squared is equal to mc mc squared to b squared plus p squared c squared. All right, that's just one way of writing of writing that. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. It involves the rest mass and the and they will say the kinetic energy as well. So the next thing we do is just to manipulate this formula. So we find that e squared is equal to m zero squared c to the fourth. So what I did was. I pulled out this factor here. That means we're multiplying by one plus, and well, we have to do something to this p squared over p squared times c squared. Well, we've p squared c squared over m zero squared c to the four, like so. All right, and that equals m zero squared c to the four times one plus p squared over m zero squared c squared. Okay, that's just a small bit of manipulation of our formula. So finally we can say that E is equal to M0 C squared outside of 1 plus P squared over M0 C squared to the half. Alright, so whereby I just took the square root of the whole thing. The next thing we need to do is apply an, another expansion. So the expansion of 1 plus X to the A is equal to 1 plus a over 1 factorial times x plus a minus 1 times ax squared over 2 factorial plus dot dot dot. Alright? So if we apply this, uh, this expansion to what we have at the moment, we have 1 plus p squared over m0 squared c squared to the half. So in this case, our value a is equal to a half, and our value x is equal to, uh, this is equal to x, let's say, there, p squared over n0 squared c squared. So let's just apply this expansion, and we'll find very quickly that e is equal to m0 c squared plus p squared over 2m. Okay? p squared over 2m. p squared over 2m is the kinetic energy term as I've said. Alright, 
Um, so I suppose you might you might have somebody say to you that one plus x to something small is something small times times what you have. Okay, so um, it, well, sorry, it, bring in the half and multiply it as well. But look, that's um. Yeah, that's look. I, that, I'm happy enough with that. Okay, so that that's pretty that's pretty straightforward stuff. But that we're not finished. We're nearly finished, but we're not we're not fully finished. Okay. So we know. I suppose if you take the square root of what I just had there, that e is equal to the square root of m zero. Well, actually, I'll go back to the start. M zero c squared plus p c to be squared. Right. We know that was the very first line. Right. But the other thing is that we know that E is equal to h bar omega. So the energy is equal to Planck's constant over 2 pi multiplied by the, the angular frequency. So let's substitute that in there. All right. So we're going to have uh, E over h is equal to, well, E over h bar, excuse me, E over h bar is equal to the square root of m0 c squared over h bar to be squared plus pc to be squared over h bar squared that's going to be equal to omega next if we just rearrange that we'll find that omega is equal to the square root of m0 c squared to be squared divided by h bar squared plus h bar squared k squared c squared over h bar squared you might say where does that come come from and the answer is that p is equal to h bar k alright that's just as another small proof but just take that for granted at the moment if you want to go ahead and prove that well that's absolutely your business so finally if we just rearrange this we'll find that omega is equal to the square root of m0 c squared to be squared over h bar squared plus k squared c squared that's your dispersion relation and some people write it as follows they say omega squared h bar squared is equal to m0 c squared to be squared plus h bar squared or no, plus excuse me um, yeah sorry h bar squared k squared c squared and that is your dispersion relation Alright, so thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.